in astrotometry, the geocentric worldview is replaced by the chronocentric worldview because everything is understood to be in motion. And time is always relative to what you are considering a time frame about. And so the concept of the hypertime shadow in astrotometry is a concept of both matter and energy, where light leaves a shadow in the form of an absence of light. Hypertime shadows and hypertime foreshadows are matter and energy. And so there is a dimension from which what we are physically manifests. And that is the hypertime dimension. You could number hypertime as dimension five. You could say that it's the fifth dimension and consider the structure of matter and energy chronocentrically from that uh, fifth dimensional perspective. It might be more suitable to number hypertime four rather than five because it is in between the third dimension, technically. But from that perspective, it's not clear yet. I, I really hesitate to number that yet. I don't know what I will be deciding about that. But definitely from that perspective, from a hypertime perspective, a lot of the questions about the nature of our world fall into place. For example, which came first, the chicken or the egg? From the hypertime perspective, you consider the egg and the chicken separately. You consider the time of the chicken and you consider the time of the egg. And through hypertime, everything is connected. In other words, there is no physical differentiation between things. It's just the patterns in the things that change with respect to space and time as it is organized in the cosmos. And so when you ask the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg, from the hypertime perspective, the egg is part of the chicken. And so the egg, in a sense, is both the chicken's hypertime shadow and its foreshadow. Uh, forward in time, if the egg becomes a chicken, then that is the chicken's hypertime foreshadow. It is also the chicken's hypertime shadow in the sense that the chicken, you know, the, the, the egg came from within the chicken. And this is a very, very, very <clears throat> important concept. This is, a, this is the reason that I am bringing astrotometry into uh, other consciousnesses right now. This is the reason that uh, I think this is such a uh, 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 imminent issue uh, with our culture and our society, because the same relationship between uh, the chicken and the egg exists in the cosmos. That has it has not entered our consciousness that the moon, with respect to the Earth has that same chicken and egg relationship. The synchronicity between the human egg and the moon is a physical connection. It's a physical relationship that exists on a level that we cannot understand with a three-dimensional analysis, with a Newtonian mechanical analysis. And so the separation between the Earth and the moon in hypertime is a relationship. In other words, there's a relationship between the Earth and the Moon. And if you, if you move something, a physical object, from the Earth to the Moon, you change the nature of the relationship. In other words, you're not just changing that for the Earth and the Moon. You're changing it for everything that depends on that relationship. And so you're changing it in a, 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 
you could say a hypertometric. I don't like that word at all. You're changing, you're ch changing the the hypertime relationship between the Earth and the Moon. If you were to do that, if if you were to do that, you're you're changing the relationship between all of the human eggs and all of the humans simultaneously. And so that is a very very touchy touchy issue. Obviously, changes to our physical mechanisms, changes to our uh, physical processes happen through time. They happen um, um, naturally, and sometimes they happen what we would consider unnaturally. And I, I just, to, just to drive this point home, just to make this perfectly, perfectly clear, my concern about this, if you consider the thalidomide babies, that was a terrible mistake. That was a terrible mistake that man made that affected thousands and thousands of lives. The, the children were born uh, in a lot of cases without limbs and they, would, they, have, they have little uh, flippers. They're the flipper children. And this was because of a, a morning sickness drug known as thalidomide that was given to the mothers. And if you could imagine that type of a mistake not made for just a small number of children, but made for our entire species. That's the type of mistake. That's the type of potential mistake that we are facing unless the proper mechanics of the heavens is taken into consideration. Now, you might take this message as being the insight of a genius visionary you might see this as the ravings of a madman, or you might see this as a message that was delivered from beyond through a willing host. In any case, no matter how you look at this message, at the nature of this message, what it says, whether or not it is correct, is the, is the question you should be asking. Is this correct? Is this analysis correct? That is the question that needs to be asked here. And I think if you consider the nature of the observations concerning the sun grazing comet and the relationship that it has to the coronal mass ejection, that relationship is real. That relationship is not going to be changed. That truth, that fact, will remain. And it will come back around. This, this will come back around in the form of potentially one of the hugest mistakes that humanity has ever made. If, if, this, if this knowledge, if this understanding is not heeded, this is a serious, serious issue. And I'm sure I'm not the first person that's ever brought this up. But I have, I am pointing to very real physical phenomenon that demonstrate the reality of the situation that the heavens are indeed hypersymmetric and that there is a hyper time that underlies our time that connects everything up there with everything down here as above so below this is the translation of the that this is the translation of the emerald tablet that sir isaac newton and ones like him uh brought into things like the lord's prayer um, in, in Christianity. And this, this, what is up there, the heavens, when those documents were authored, was considered to be God. That was God, our Father, who art in heaven. That heavens is, under, is understood to be God. And so a lot of the things that are said about the nature of that space, we're talking about these relationships and this is very, very important information that seems to have washed out and may have biblical consequences if humanity does not restore this understanding before these, uh, these journeys are made in a, in a knowledgeable way, in a way that, that demonstrates understanding of what is actually going on in the world. And so NASA and the military and the corporate industrial complex that supports these entities can try to deny this, can try to fight against the truth. 
But what is going to happen is it is going to find itself an unexpected parent to an unwanted child that is, in a sense, in a very real sense, the product of its lack of understanding of the true nature of the birds and the bees. Word to your ravens.